All right, so before we close this lesson, since we have you know done so much, uh, let's do a quick render. So we'll do a couple of things. Firstly, I want to convert the landscape to geometry. Okay, so which is, uh, if you look at the terrain, this is currently a volume, okay, which, is, which won't render. So you do a convert and you'll find a convert height field, which I've already taken, but just to show you. So we'll do a convert height field and uh, yeah, we can also bake the points, the point colors if you want to, but right now we'll just render it grayscale. So this is about uh, 3 million polygons. We don't really need that much. Yeah, let's just, let's bring this down to about 0 0.6. So yeah, you'll reduce quality a little bit, that's fine. And then it will have a path attribute or a name attribute, which I don't really want. So I'm going to delete that. So I, I took an attribute delete and we delete the name attribute. All right, and then let's just, you know, build up the basic stuff. So I have made a shop net and a rop net. And like in the middle of the file, I used a little bit of redshift, but we'll set it up using Octane as well. So I'll just take an Octane render. I usually take a custom because if you take an Octane render, it actually makes it here in the uh, out folder, which is not what I want. So I prefer it in the ROP net that I have made. Okay, so the second thing we want to do is we want to do two things, which is I need to set up my, uh, my render node. So I'm going to take an Octane network and I also want, and we'll just call it render. So I usually like to set up my own because it gives me more flexibility. And I also want to just set up a glossy material and we'll call it uh, basic. And this should assign automatically because uh, we had created like that redshift material called basic. So I deleted that. So when you create another material called basic, it will automatically get assigned. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here inside the render node is we'll create an out render target and then I'll just quickly create, we need these four or five nodes that, that are in there. So we need to take a camera. So we'll take a thin lens camera and turn off autofocus. Then uh, I want to set up the environment. So I'm going to take an environment texture and we'll also take a texture RGB and take a, we need two things. We need a transform 2D and we need a spherical projection. So we'll connect this later. So this comes in here and then I need the imager. You can press P to get rid of the parameter window. I don't need that right now. Okay. And then uh, we'll take a path tracer. So the advantage of doing it this way is uh, essentially I can take multiple path trace nodes. So if I want to have different settings, I can do that. If I want to have a path trace node and I also want to do an ambient occlusion node, I can do that. So you get, essentially you get multiple options. Okay. So within the path tracer, I just want to quickly adjust a few settings. Uh, which is firstly come down here to emulate old volume behavior and turn that on. This will become relevant once we get to, you know, rendering the cloud, but you might as well turn it on right now. The second thing is get the GI clamp down to one and get this to about 500 and the diffuse depth and specular depth will keep to three. Okay. That's basically it. And then I'll get the filter size down to one. So I'm using, uh, version 2018.1 like if I look at this so yeah I'm on version 2018.1 okay okay and then lastly I need the post processing so I'll just take a post processing and we'll plug that in and that's essentially it this is what we need to do now one of the things you can do with this which I uh, which I do fairly often is uh, once you've done this you can just take this and drag it to your octane shelf. So what happens is that the next time you want, want this, you can just click over there and it will be available for you. Okay. So if you've done everything right, I can just pretty much hit render and won't have to do anything else. Okay. So let's just come to the IPR. I'll save this file. So we'll do save as I have a test file for this already. So we'll just save it to instancing render octane. Okay, let me hit IPR. Okay, so if you get this warning, which what that essentially means is that I forgot to pick up my render node. Okay, so let this start rendering. 
So it will just go to a default uh, ambient occlusion render. So what you need to do is you need to come to the ROPnet and I do ma I make this mistake a lot of times. So you need to come to render target and then come to the shopnet that you made and pick up render. And then we'll hit IPR again. So this will, now it will be fine. Yeah, so it's, it's effectively the same result except that, you know, now it's using the node that you made. So we'll just come in here and I'll plug in the texture and it'll go black once you connect the texture. And then I'll pick up the one that I use most often. I won't use this in the final render because this is a commercial HDR and I won't be able to share it. But for now it's fine. Like once we do another render, I'll change it. So let me just adjust this so we can see a little bit. Yeah, I think this is okay. So now like, so this is essentially it. So if I just zoom out a little bit, let me, sorry, let me just keep to camera one. Yeah, so you should be able to see, you know, like everything that we have done so far. Yeah, so it's pretty decent. Like if I zoom in a little bit, we should be able to get all the detail. I think some of them are floating a little bit because, but yeah, so all of that work, you know, you can finally see a rendered result out of it, which is nice. This one is kind of floating a little bit because we essentially made big circles. So at some point of time, it'll like, it'll come over an edge and it won't bend. What you can do, the solution around it is you make smaller circles and you create more scattering points. But uh, based on our camera angle, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, if you want to make those changes, you can do that. Alright, so that's basically it. So in the next lesson, we'll start modeling the electric poles.